This speedrun took 60 hours of attempts, 8 failures, lots of resets, and pain. <laughs> Okay, 60 hours isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. Uh, while also learning new strategies for the run, including super sweaty methods like animation cancelling, full while using Wigfred, a character I hadn't run super fast with before, and utilizing her new skill tree, including her brand new best in SWAT weapon. I utilized all these methods into a new route which I haven't done before, which finally resulted in me completing a run that beat my old record with Wolfgang. Uh, ki kind of, sort of. This is the Wigfred skill tree all bosses speed run. It all starts with the world that we will be running in. Bleah! Sorry, I saw a twiggy tree. Ha <laughs> ha, I love Celestial Chonkian XD. So there is one big bottleneck for this run, which is completely RNG. This bottleneck is getting the Celestial Orb to spawn before you require it to spawn the Celestial Champion. The Celestial Orb has a chance to spawn from Meteor Storms, so in the world settings, we'll switch the Meteor Frequency to tons to increase the chances that the orb will actually spawn. Otherwise, the only other world settings we're changing are the starting resource variety, because, uh, because I tried to run a world with Twiggy Trees and, uh, it was so painful I screamed with lots of S's because I couldn't even craft a hammer by the end of day one due to lack of stinks. Okay, this no twigs is actually making me sad. Like, I can't progress. I can't make a hammer to hammer pick houses. I'm so sad. So, uh, yeah, um, changing this world setting ensures you get saplings rather than the objectively inferior Twiggy Trees. Also, to make the run extra painful, uh, I recently got a new PC so I didn't switch back some of the settings, so, uh, distortion is left on. <laughs> now, while the early days play in the background, what exactly is the route in this run? Well, buckle in because it's gonna take some explaining. So, firstly, Wilfred's best in slot spear requires an item which you can only get as your spawning celestial champion. So, we want that as soon as possible to unlock maximum damage. <laughs> But also, Celestial Champion drops the Enlightened Crown, which has insane synergy with Wigfred, and is effectively at about a 40% damage boost for free. So of all the characters in Don't Starve, Wigfred is the one character who truly has two great reasons to actually kill Celestial Champion first. But also, a big bottleneck for defeating all the bosses fast is Deerclops. But wait, Jakey, isn't Deerclops the first winter boss and she's like really easy? Yes, but we're specifically talking about her crystallized cousin, Crystal Deerclops, who can only be spawned when Deerclops dies and a Lunar Rift is active. But wait, What's a Lunar Rift, you might ask? Well... <laughs> to activate the Lunar Rifts, you must give an item to Wagstaff after defeating Celestial Champion, then the Rifts will activate five days later. But to kill Celestial Champion, you need to assemble all three Lunar Altar sets. One set is on Lunar Island, the simplest set to acquire. The second set is hidden underground on the mainland and can only be dug up by using Astral Detector, which you get after activating this archives using an Iridescent Gem. And to get this special Iridescent Gem, you must transform a Star Coil Staff into a Moon Coil Staff, which is only obtainable early enough and possible to do on Day 11. And then deconstructing it using a different Magical Staff, which means we also need to get to and get back from the ruins before day 11. And finally, the last altar is held by the Krabby King. But to make him actually drop the altar, when you kill him, you must plug Pearl's Pearl into him, which is a special item you only get after doing 10 tasks for a Pearl who is an NPC out in the ocean, which is a whole other kind of words. Whew, I'm sick, I have a cough. All of this needs to be done fast because Deerclops naturally spawns on day 30, and the rifts take 5 days to spawn, and you cannot spawn Deerclops outside of winter, and the last day of winter is day 35. So you can see now, if we're not fast enough and we don't kill Deerclops and Crystal Deerclops in the first winter, the run is basically over, because then you have to wait for the second winter, which is day 91, to finish the run, which is very, very slow. So the key points in this run to remember are day 11 for the Mooncaller Staff, day 22 for Pearl's Pearl, and day 31 for the Celestial Champion kill. And after that, uh, we'll, we'll wing it because the first half of the run is the hardest and only kills six out of the 22 bosses. So let's get started. First day, we're searching for the mosaic biome while collecting twigs, grass, and flint along the way. But wait, why is JT collecting carrots and berries when Wigfrid can only eat meat? Well, gamer, that's because in this run, not only will we be speed running all the bosses, but we'll also be taming a rider B-flow to get around faster and overall just help out during the run. Now is a good time to go over the skill tree selection I used for this run. If you want a deep explanation of all the skills, then you can go watch my Wigfred guide, but we chose the first three Beeflow skills to train the Beeflow faster and gain free inspiration while riding the Beeflo, then we definitely want her best in slot spear fully unlocked, as we'll be solely using that weapon as soon as we acquire it. The battle cool canister I thought would be useful to store songs, but we'll see how that goes. Mystic Resilience is free defense versus planar damage. The haha -ha funny shield is haha -ha funny uh, to use, except I don't actually end up using it in this run. For the affinity, we went for the shadow affinity for damage versus lunar enemies, then with one point left to spare, I grabbed hard helm one to make my battle helmets last 10% longer. A key 
part of the time saving in this run is Wigfrid's natural health and static regeneration when she fights. So I will be avoiding using healing crockpot dishes for the most part, as I simply don't have time to make said dishes, meaning I can't take too much damage since I'm relying solely on her natural regeneration. Normally I'd make a big deal about spotting a shadow piece statue this early, but we won't be killing shadow pieces until way later on, as right now we're just worrying about only hunting down Celestial Champion as fast as we can. End of day one, we found the mosaic. This is where we'll get all of our starter gold and rocks for the run, and where we'll have to search for the before mentioned Celestial Orb, but later on. What, what, um, um, what the, why, where's all my gold rocks? D2 science machine for a backpack shovel and almost forgot the beefalo bell. And I did forget to make a butterfly net to catch two butterflies. Eee! Remember to collect your seeds, kids. We will need them to grow two essential potatoes later. This cobble path in a grass biome with ponds is a dead giveaway that Chester should be close by, who is super useful for the extra inventory space. Or at least he would be, but I couldn't find him. So sorry, Chester, I won't be using you in this run, which was a lot less devastating than I thought it would be. The first of many banjo houses have been claimed for my precious pig house collection. <laughs> I'm dying. Capturing two fireflies, one for a future mine hat as my main light source until I get the enlightened crown, and one for one of Pearl's tasks. A marble set piece. We require 10 marble later on, and one gear is required for a fridge. So this is a good find. And a fun but painful fact. One of my previous runs failed solely because I straight up didn't find any marble on the entire map when I needed it for like eight in-game days. Crazy unlucky. Anyway. A sinkhole and a wormhole. Yum, yum, yum. Yum 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 is right. Having both a sinkhole and a wormhole close by is great for a base location, so finding it this early means I can start unloading my items into a central area. But Jakey, you should totally jump through that wormhole to like, you know, check where it goes, because like it might save you uh, time later. So we do want to grab a beeflow as soon as possible and forget to name it. But by this point, the name of the beeflow should have been a uh, let me check my check my notes. Uh yep, Uwu the Fourth. The names of the beeflow in these runs became more deranged for every run that I failed. Anyway, we can feed the beeflow the berries and the carrots we've been collecting to begin the domestication process. That way when we start riding it later, we can ride it for longer periods of time, helping to get around faster and moving heavy objects. Since we're not going to be utilizing crock pots for our own food all too much, I will be chugging raw meat, monster meat, and cooked monster meat for hunger. This saves time and lowers my sanity so I can get some nightmare fuel ready for when we go to the ruins. We also require a whole load of silk for the run, so we're going to gather that now while we're also looking for pig houses and living trees for living logs. Finally, alchemy engine time. We're making a piggyback, which I don't usually use, but we simply just need the inventory space. This backpack gives more inventory space than the normal backpack, but reduces your speed by 10%? Except if you're riding a beeflo, then it won't affect the beeflo speed at all. Now begins the pause abusing, which I initially I didn't really like, but whatever, I had to I had to use it. Basically, whenever I needed extra time to think or inventory manage while not moving, then I'll pause the game to save some in-game time, as the time constraints of the first 35 days of the run are just that tight. Just like your mum. <laughs> Sorry. So I utilize the pause abusing to navigate menus and remember what I meant to be crafting, such as a hand bat, as our weapon of choice until we get our spear. And of course, the almighty miner hat. Oh, what a Feed the beefy. Despite the fact that I won't be utilizing too many crockpot dishes, we still want three crockpots to cook a crockpot dish for our beefalo later. Which means we had to toast an entire forest for the charcoal. Wouldn't it be epic if I got a tree guard? Food. Yes, chopping dead trees paid off. I had a slim 1.3 recurring percent chance to spawn a tree guard for every tree that I chopped, including dead trees. This mini boss mob will drop me a hefty six living logs, which is enough living logs for the entire run. Delicious. Is that a terrarium? We need to find the terrarium to spawn the twins and the eye of terror later in the run. Good find, but the lack of Chester is starting to hurt. I could really use the extra inventory space at this point. Oh wait, I can't. I, don't, I haven't killed any beefalo yet. Now it's time to keep Uwu the fourth away as I'm about to massacre his family for their meat and wool. 15 wool I'll need a, uh, eventually to be exact. Also, I want a beefalo horn for a beefalo hat later, and we can see animation cancelling in action. In this run, I'll use one of two methods to animation cancel. Unequipping and re-equipping my helmet to cancel the animation of my attacks after my hit has landed and the damage is registered, or by simply switching between two of the same helmet or body pieces. This leads to a theoretical increase of DPS of up to 16.6%-ish, uh, but in practice it changes. It can be more or less due to differences in kiting patterns. I have everything I need to go to the ruins, so it's time to Sub the base. The bass will be a mess the entire run, as making it tidy would be a time loss. We can't have that. No, no.
Anyway, the base will consist of three crock pots, a fridge, all the crafting stations I'll need, and an amalgamation of items all over the floor. But any items that could be stolen, destroyed, or eaten will be stored off the floor so that I don't explode with sadness when my gems are stolen by a mole worm. This is why we have our crock pots to use one twig and three filler to make steamed twigs. This crock pot recipe cannot be consumed by players but can be fed to a beeflow for a hefty 100 hunger, which will keep the beeflow from starving for one third of a day. This will be key for domesticating our beeflow as we won't always be riding it to gain domestication points, so when that's the case, we just gotta make sure its hunger is above zero and it will continue to domesticate. Yes. Okay, so remember how I said we're ready to go to the ruins? Well, uh, here's the thing. Once we get back from the ruins, we need to do the Mooncaller's event on the night of day 11. But to do that, we need to actually know where the Moonstone itself is, as that's where the event happens. Uh, so we're frantically looking for the Moonstone forest now rather than after the ruins. That way, I know how much time I have in the ruins. <laughs> Wow, one horn. Pretty lucky time save in the long run. We managed to kill a vault goat while exploring the oasis and it dropped a vault goat horn. This drop is essential because we need two of these to craft our best in slot spear later. Spear? Spear. I also recognize the ground markings nearby, which gives away where the summer boss antlion will spawn in, you guessed it, summer. Moonstone is there. That has to be Moonstone. I haven't actually found it yet though. Behind the oasis, I saw a tiny slither of forest. So that must be the Moonstone forest as I've already found the world's other forests. Now let's head back to the base for some final preparations, then head down into the caves. Whenever I go in and out of the caves, I'll try to pause the game as I do, so that way the loading time of the caves happens while the game is paused, so it doesn't dig into my in-game timer as much. Neat trick suggested to me by Campfriff Pumpernickel in my Twitch chat, one of my many professional backseat gamers. Wow, wow, it is very epic. Thanks, gamer. Yeah, band. Oh. But, but wait, Jakey, you haven't made a lantern with those freshly harvested balls. But why? Well, young gamer, it is because I have become a minor hack enthusiast. Why is- <laughs> I ain't complaining, but why is the blue mushroom forest right next to my base? Yo, not last run, but this is the run. Hmm. <laughs> It's like, it's like a big arrow. That's kind of funny. All right, let me see. To help map out the caves, I'm pulling the map around to figure out where the boundaries of the map are. That's bizarre. To determine how much space is in certain parts of the map to figure out firstly, where's the center? And secondly, using the already uncovered parts of the map in combination with the boundaries of the map, I can roughly guess where the ruins and other key biomes are. Most room is up there, so I would assume it's like top or top right. But this is only an estimate because, uh, uh well, <laughs> we'll see. Okay, never mind, it's right here. What is this run, RNG? Like, what's happening. This run is going decently, so we can't be messing it up now. Guys, did you know if you fed a glow rage, you'll be full it glows? Ah! Guys, it's day seven. We've got to get into the ruins. Please be real and not an extension biome, because I'm kind of confused. I don't know where it, the ruins are. After an abnormally longer than usual search time of over six minutes, unacceptable, we finally find the ruins. It's okay, though. We're still making good time despite the weird ruins generation. And as soon as I get into the ruins, I'm fighting three terabeaks on my beeflow, and then... My beefalo box me off, causing me to get slammed by two terror beaks. That was horrible. This is not good at all. This whole situation is horrible. I don't know why that beeflo is not more tamed. I, I can barely ride it before it kicks me off. I'm now forced to run away without my beeflo because it's begging for food, so it might not let me ride it for a quick getaway. Since it's the nightmare phase, there are way too many terror beaks waiting for me as I go deeper into the ruins. Meanwhile, I'm frantically checking the map while running away so I don't run face first into a clockwork so I don't have another mob trying to kill me. This is horrible. Really gonna die to a ruins rush? Oh, well. I really thought I was not to do that close. Don't know why, that the bishop instantly woke up and shot me. Now we do actually need some health to tank some clockwork bishops down here as they drop purple gems guaranteed and we needed 11 purple gems for the run. So I can't afford to get hit much more. Thankfully, the nightmare phase begins ending so some terabeaks start despawning and we take the last two out. But we're left with a tiny pool of health to finish off the rest of the ruins rush while having no healing food. Our first target in the ruins is Ancient Guardian and any bishops I find along the way. So to find Ancient Guardian, we grab two full sight and two nightmare fuel to craft the full sight medallion, which reveals where Ancient Guardian is on the map. But then... Wait, what? Wait, what? Where, where is he? It's... He's he's not on the map? Ha! What is this? What is this? <laughs> it was too good to be true. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he on the polar opposite side of the map? You don't follow the arrow, but the arrow was pointing in the wrong direction too! <laughs> I kind of thought that the 
the world gen here was kind of goofy, but I gave it a pass. That is barbaric. Why is that allowed? As long as there's like a station and some bishops over there, then it's not Jova, but like it's basically Jova. Like we were a day ahead and this will at least put us a day behind. Ah! So despite the one or two day time loss the world generation caused me, I soldier on. I'm, I'm still giggling to myself because Agent Guidance on the opposite side of the original Ruins branch. Yo, but like, okay, but like imagine though, imagine, right? But like imagine if I came out of here and went to the left just a little bit more, I would have seen this and instantly went to the ruins here. Why is Codex Umbra staring at me? Who's Codex Zum Umbra is this? Oh my goodness, what is, oh my, oh my goodness. Agent Guardian's back here apparently. Oh my goodness. Where's the sitting horror man? Another target I didn't mention yet. For one of Pearl's tasks, you must take a wooden chair for her. As part of that quest, you need the blueprint for a ruins chair. This blueprint can be acquired from a nightmare creature who is found sitting on a repaired ruins chair in the ruins. But you must be insane to see and attack him to make him drop the blueprint. <laughs> this Vifo in particular is really trying to get me killed this round. Yo, you regen tons against these spiders because your regen is uh, uh, your regen is calculated based on their max health, not how much damage you did. So when they curl up, you just farm a bunch of health from them. I have a station, so as long as you know Agent Guardian gives me a nice amount of full sight, we just need to kill Agent Guardian. Finally, we make it to the entrance of Agent Guardian's labyrinth and begin making our way through. We find him, Ancient Geordian, but we don't want our beef flow to get massacred, so we're gonna keep Ooh the fourth a little further away and feed him some steamed twigs before engaging the boss. Now the fight begins. The basic strategy for Agent Guardian is to ram him into pillars and debris to stun him, allowing you to have an easy window of DPS, which allows me to show you the first instance of serious animation cancelling by equipping two different helmets after each hit registers, cancelling the end of the animation to start the next attack sooner. This fight can quite easily be done without speed burners or being hit, so this will be a good refresh for my health, along with the meat and horn which Agent Guardian drops. The horn in particular will give me a bunch of healing when I eat it. Animation cancelling like this in fights not only makes the fight faster but also reduces the resources you need in the fight meaning you spend less time before the fight gathering resources but in this example agent guardian takes no resources so just dies up to 16 percent faster agent guardian hits his phase 2 threshold where he is now shadow aligned i am also shadow aligned so i don't get any extra damage but i do get extra damage reduction if i got hit by him or his shadow tentacles these shadow tentacles have a chance to spawn every time agent geordian takes a hit and the deadliest part of the fight as they lay in wait barely visible on the floor and pluck a punch if you take a hit Ooh. In fact, two punches. If a bunch of them are close to each other, you can very easily die to them, so I have to keep my ears open to listen for where he spawns those tentacles. Now that the light plants have gone dark, I need to keep my minor hat on to see. That means no more animation cancelling and no more armor. And I have low health. I'm incredibly vulnerable in this position. As soon as Ancient Guardian dies, I grab the horn and devour it for the healing it provides. Baiting out the shadow tentacles into attacking and then staying away for a short time causes them to despawn. Now, let's see what we got in Ancient Guardian's chest. <laughs> Epic. Uh, live commentary, Jakey was too busy concentrating and didn't even react. Okay, uh, so we did get a Lazy Explorer, which is usually an amazing drop. But in this run, we'll get our best in slot spear, which has speed bonus 2. And we're using a B flow, which has even more speed bonus. So, um, Lazy Explorer not as useful in this run. But otherwise, green gems and full sight are great. Now, time to tick off the rest of what we need, starting with hunting down clockwork bishops for purple gems. These biomes with 8 statues always have 2 bishops guarding the center of them, but we must tactically put our battle helm on to tank the damage. Or otherwise, keeping our minor hat on so we're able to attack. The clock has struck day 10. That means I have 14 minutes and 30 seconds to get out of the ruins and start the Moonfaller's vent before it's too late. Using 6 full sight to repair a broken station is a little expensive, but I'd rather spend the full sight than time trying to find the naturally repaired station since my ruins branches are so far apart from each other and I don't know where the repaired altar might be. Now for our crafting checklist, turn all of our fragments into blocks, then craft a magic luminescence, some construction amulets, then use a construction amulet to make a deconstruction staff and two star caller staffs at half the usual price. Next is about 30 full sight walls to block off the moonstone to make sure the event doesn't fail. Then finally we want as much armor as I can possibly make using construction amulets and the remaining full sight while preserving a few uses of a construction amulet, save on materials for other recipes back on the surface. But we still don't have enough purple gems. It was all under control. All under control. <laughs> no. 
Now we have everything, it's time to head out to get to the Moonstone event on time. Usually I'd pick a stack of lichen to feed the beefalo on the way out of the ruins, but I am short on time, so we're skipping. Still cutting it close, I don't know if I'll make it in time. Oh. Okay, okay, it's still the end of day 10. Cool. Okay, it's actually not over. Despite all that terrible RNG, like, it's actually still quite doable. Where did I think Moonstone was? Oh yeah, they're right, I saw that forest, that's right. I was so confused, I was like, wait, was that the last world where I thought Moonstone was beyond Oasis? Man, I'm trying to find the Moonstone, because I don't know where it is. It's somewhere in here. And with just a little while of searching around the forest, we find the Moonstone set piece and start preparing it by surrounding it with full sight walls we made earlier, which have a bunch of health to withstand any damage they might take, and plugging one of the Starcaller staffs I made earlier in the ruins into the Moonstone. I'm also tactically wasting the Lazy Explorer to lower my sanity so I can kill nightmare creatures for nightmare fuel, which we will need at some point. The reasoning for placing walls the way that I have is because mobs that try to attack the moonstone can attack over walls so there's a one wall unit gap between the walls and the moonstone to prevent that. There's also little outcrops around the perimeter of the full sight barrier that I've made with extra full sight walls. This can sometimes get mobs stuck attacking the air if they approach at the right angle but otherwise I will need to defend the moonstone by fighting any enemies which are damaging the walls. But remember if this event fails the run is over. Primarily want to defend this side. and he was stuck in the corner. So he's chewing down that side real fast. Maybe they might get in over there. Ooh, that was a close one. There were multiple mobs attacking one side of the barrier and I took far too long heading over to defend that side. If all else fails, physically block the entrance with your body, leading to the hounds and pigs breaking through the walls. Luckily, when you attack the moonstone event mobs, they will retaliate and attack you rather than ignoring you and going for the moonstone. Casual one hit from break completely calculated. Mm -hmm. Success! With the Mooncaller staff acquired, I've achieved the first essential objective of the run. Not only is this event essential, but it also provides us with some meat which we'll use for food for the coming days. Also, also, the fighting granted me a notable amount of regeneration, so my health doesn't look as dire as before. Also, 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 uh, we need moon rocks for Pearl's task, among a few other things. We have enough moonstone for Pearl. So a calculated make it break, so it drops stones. Even though it doesn't do that, let's skedaddle. Did I check where this wormhole goes? No, because I only just came here. <laughs> Goes to eat these Miss Wiggles. It is I, Banjo the Business Pig, sent by them to stop you from hunting down Celestial Chonkian because he is eeping on the moon. Oh wow, Miss Wiggles, you seem to be sleeping. I have the perfect product for you. Okay, she's waking up. Uh, uh, quick, and pan to again. Zualdo! Well, Miss Wiggles, you do seem to like sleeping. Luckily for you, I have a product to put you to sleep forever. A sleep mask from Mantis Sleep. This video is sponsored by Mantis Sleep. Mantis Sleep provide premium quality sleep masks for you to sleep wherever you may find yourself. Perhaps you're watching a speed run and you're struggling to resist the urge to backseat the streamer? Simply put on the Mantis Sleep Mask Pro to block out all that light to allow you to sleep and avoid embarrassing yourself. Or perhaps you have some children you want to ignore. Just use the Mantis Sleep Mask Sound, which not only blocks out light, but also has thin Bluetooth headphones built in to play relaxing music as you fall into a deep slumber. There are plenty of other mask types, for example, the Weighted Mask, the Cool Mask, or even the Steam Mask which does not play games, but instead heats, relaxes, soothes, and moisturizes your eyes for a restful nap. I took the man to sleep quiz to see what mask best suits me, and they recommended to me the Mask Pro. And so they sent me that mask, <laughs> which I used while I was away at a hotel and a spa where I took my mum for Mother's Day. Wow. Uh, <coughs> definitely primarily for my, uh, my mum and not for me getting a full body, relaxing body massage. Hell yeah, with my Man to Sleep Mask Pro. <coughs> I'm still sick. If you want to be as relaxed as me, then make sure to go to Mantis Sleep and take a look at all the masks they have to offer and use my link in the description and my code Jakey for 10% off. Wow. Wow, that was that a dream? That's crazy. All right, anyway. What? I never checked that wormhole? Dude, huh? Why did I never check that wormhole? That went to exactly where I needed it to go. <laughs>
<laughs> Whatever. Always check your wormholes, ladies and gentlemen. That would have saved me a little bit of time earlier in the run. Anyway, let's deconstruct the newly acquired Mooncore staff to obtain the precious iridescent gem. Then head down into the caves to start the search for the archives. Uh, except there's not much of a search because our sinker was very luckily right next to the blue mushroom forest, which is in front of the lunar grotto biome, which was followed by the archives. Precisely where we must go. Very good RNG. Wow, truly a seeded run. Wow, such a cheater. My goodness. Finally. Plugging the iridescent gem into the third pedestal activates the archives and starts a war out in the lunar grotto biome, but we won't concern ourselves with that. Now we grab the knowledge capsule that will give us the blueprint we need and take it to the puzzle room and begin puzzling. Wow, easy puzzle. My wow, first try didn't fail due to bad memory. No, no, first time, yes, yes. With that done, we acquire the Astral Detector Blueprint. Let's mine a statue to grab a Thulsite and a Moon Rock, which are the materials to craft the Astral Detector, then head back to the surface to utilize it. One mushroom, please. Okay, fine. I didn't want a mushroom anyway. Ooh, mushrooms, though. Yo, great gestalt's help. Oh my goodness. Before heading back to the surface, we have to worry about our beefalo's food source. We're still going to use steamed twigs to keep Uru the fourth happy, but we'll use blue mushroom as filler to make the steamed twigs. So we decimate the blue mushroom's biome supply of uh, shroomies to gather 80 blue caps. In the crock pot, one twig and three mushrooms will make steamed twigs. Uh, so yeah, it's faster to gather the mushrooms than the twigs, hence why we gathered all the mushrooms. I need more twigs. Man, I really wish I had Chester. Let's go! Excuse me? Using the astral detector points us toward multiple essential landmarks. Pick the carrot! The first two locations being the locations of the two astral old pieces, which together make the second astral altar buried underneath the mainland. First piece of the second altar acquired. Oh, oh what's this? Boofle. Wow, how is two? Good grief, just hold F, boys. The hound attack is neat because we need eight hound seeds for a jacket for Prowl to complete one of her tasks. Although, we'll soon need to find Dragonfly for a more substantial deposit of hound's teeth from the hound mounds. Why is your Wigfrid naked? Uh, it is Goldfrid, actually. Actually? That emoji is Gearless's fault. Yes, yes. Out my way, stupid people! Are we found the second piece of the second altar, the final piece. But my astral detector's durability is looking kind of low, so I can hammer it while it's deployed, so it returns the crafting materials so we can craft a fresh one with 10 uses again. Now that we've dug the second altar pieces up, the astral detector now points at the first set of altar pieces, which are on Luna Island out to sea. So it's time to move the altar pieces I found on the mainland close to the shore, then scout out and find Luna Island. Let me drop this off at the bass. Good, good. Uh, set sail from a- Wow, shadow pieces. Killer B set piece in the Killer B biome. But before we set sail, I'm gonna grab four bunnies to make a Presta Hatatator, the magic crafting station, then build a shadow manipulator using some living logs, nightmare fuel, and a purple gem, with a construction amulet to consume less crafting materials, then finally use the shadow manipulator and the construction amulet to make two telelocator staffs at a discounted crafting cost. These staves will be used to force it to rain at the end of autumn for two of Prowl's tasks. Now begins the hunt for a bottle. But they can also be used to quickly get off Luna Island by teleporting myself somewhere randomly on the map, rather than rowing back to the mainland as a quick time save. Good meowing, hello. Whoa, a bottle spawned in front of me! For when a bottle spawns in front of you. Wow, it's not too far off. Epic. Another bottle! I don't need it unless I do it lordly and I miss like and buy the wrong blueprint. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> no, no, no bullying. No, no. As for boats, we'll be utilizing grass boats mostly because they're cheap, but also because we don't need a permanent good boat like a wooden boat. Ugh, my eyes. But there's also another reason why we're using grass boats, which we will discuss later. Wow, a triangle. This triangle is where we will set up all three altars to spawn Celestial Champion later. So let's begin assembling the two altars we have possession of. The two pieces of the second altar from the mainland, and then we must mine out the three pieces to the first altar from Lunar Island and move them over to the Ritual Triangle. With those in place, let's teleport off of Lunar Island. Yo, what epic teleport! What the hell? Took me straight back to the bass. What is mine piggyback? We'll need a potato oil too later on for a crafting recipe, and it's why we've been collecting seeds up until this point. But to plant seeds, we need the garden rigmajig to create turf to allow us to plant said seeds. Farming guide coming soon, TM. Okay, guys, I need, uh, I need to uh, <coughs> open my very top secret uh, wiggle boss run spreadsheet. Yes, yes. Show us the spreadsheet. No, no. Top secret. Spread your sheets for us, huh? Right, I need to leave my beefalo somewhere so it doesn't get mad at me. We did need 15 beefalo wool for the entire run, but we did already use four to make the saddle earlier, so we need the remaining 11 for future recipes. 
the last altar is held by Crab King, but to make him drop it, we actually need to plug Pearl's Pearl into him, otherwise he doesn't drop it. So let's get started with acquiring said Pearl's Pearl. No Chester makes me sad. Sleep well. Remember boys, if you follow, your life expectancy will fall by approximately 3%. Smiley face. We got some, some potato plants. That's good. Now begins the massive preparations for Pearl's tasks. This requires a lot of items and we don't have the Chester, so we'll be tight on inventory space. Okay, so the one thing I'm kind of missing badly right now is just the insulation, which is a hunt or dragonfly for hound mounds. Imagine not just having good luck and finding a insulation vest set piece. Damn, I actually don't know where dragonfly is. That's like bizarre. I think picking is probably a better bet. If it's not too much trouble or a hunt, that'll do. We want to do all 10 of Pearl's tasks in one foul swoop. Some tasks can be done whenever, some have to be seen and approved by Pearl or require interactions with Pearl, and others have very strict time windows, so let's focus on those tasks primarily. It better give me a koala fin because I'm going in the wrong direction for Dragonfly. Oh my goodness, it's actually a 12 track one. Maybe, I don't know, I can't count. Counting's hard. Oh my goodness! 50 more tracks, please. Oh my goodness! Please, at least three more tracks. Finally, these tasks are giving Pearl appropriate clothing when certain weather conditions are met and she has to be outside of a house, so during daytime, so that you can give her said appropriate clothing. This is what the Telelocators are for. We'll force rain to happen on the night of day 20, so we must prepare everything else before then. I didn't get enough hound's teeth for a dapper vest in the end, so I opted instead to do a hunt and kill a koala vent for its trunk to make a different insulation vest. This also got me a good amount of hunger with all the meat that it dropped. Oh. But for Pearl, those Chester imagery space hurts so bad, I like have just enough. Room. Surely we'll find some cookie cutters on the way to Prowl. Surely! Oh, the shark is here. Interesting. This may not seem like a big deal, but this new shark boss spawns in the ocean incredibly randomly. There is little to no pattern as to where he spawns, but it is easily indicated once you're close by, as lots of ice glaciers will be present like we're seeing here. This doesn't save us any time now, but it will save us a lot of exploration time later. Now that we've arrived with everything to do all 10 tasks, let's get started. Teleport some shadow creatures, boys. Now begins the teleportation spam until it begins raining to force Pearl's weather tasks and visions. Oh no, my flowies. I need some of those. We do indeed need six petals to make a pretty parasol for Pearl, so we gotta pick those before they burn due to the lightning induced by the telelocator staff. Surely some of those flowers burning won't cause the tasks to not count, right? Anyway, we need moon glass later on too for an essential crafting recipe, so let's steal that from Pearl. Every time I use the telelocator staff, it increases the moisture of the world, and then once you hit a certain threshold of moisture, it begins raining. Goodbye, buffalo. Oh, very good. Might have done that a smidge early, but it's fine. Remember that chair blueprint we unlocked in the ruins? This is where we're gonna use it. By placing the chair it unlocks down near Pearl so that she can insult it. So, it's raining, and as soon as winter starts, it begins snowing. Pearl, 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 Pearl! What's happening here is if the world temperature is below zero and it's winter, then any rain will turn to snow. And since it was just nighttime, nighttime's low temperature is still in effect. And as such, it immediately begins snowing. So we give her the insulation vest we made earlier to complete the winter snowing task. Using the bottle we got earlier to buy the pinch and which blueprint from Pearl, which we need to clean up the debris in the ocean around Pearl's Island for another task. And the temperature has risen back up to above zero, so now the snow has turned back to rain. Oh, yeah. Time to give the pretty parasol to Pearl to tick off the final weather task. Yeah, so now she's just done that, so that was that task. But... Once I return to Pearl, she has seen my ruins chair and given me the sawhorse blueprint. This crafting structure gives me access to a few furniture recipes. The one we need though is the wooden chair, because Pearl is picky and wants a wooden chair and not the rickety old chair, which I painstakingly went into the ruins to get specifically for her. Wow, it's so rude. Uh, no, but you do need to build the ruins chair, else she doesn't give you the sawhorse blueprint to build the wooden chair, yes. Once she sees and sits on that wooden chair, the task will be complete. Anyway, earlier I lied and said that I had everything for Pearl's tasks, but I am missing one step. Of items. With my thermal stone that's been cooking under a star for like eight minutes and now it's gone cold again. Surely this is a salty biome right here. Surely. Hungry beefer. If cookie cutters can spawn in amongst the sharky biome, I would assume not, but I don't know, man, because it seems like the sea stacks intermingle. Oh, sharky shark. About to die. Beefer about to die to a sharky shark. Good grief. Abandon ship. Well, there's Sharky Shark, but we don't care for Sharky Shark. It's actually over, boys. Not even day 22 Pearl, it's actually over. <gasps> ah, so inconceivably sad. Oops, I misclicked. I Uh-oh. Oh, that hurt. As much as I need to find the cookie cutters, but also want to stay somewhat efficient, 
in that I want to be on like efficiently exploring the map rather. Oh wow, here they are. Okay, it's uh, potentially not over, except kind of because my hand bat is like about to break. Cookie cutter shells. These shells can be acquired by killing cookie cutters which spawn in mini salt biomes in the ocean. Good job, Buffalo. I need this Buffalo to get tamed soon. I've ran I have no more food for it. No, no. But the problem is they spawn kind of randomly. The only consistent pattern with cookie cutter shell spawns is that usually most of the shells in the world will spawn relatively close to a shore of sorts, whether that's the mainland shore or Luna Island shore. I have nothing more to feed you, little buffalo. I can feed you some emergency twigs. But also, a cookie cutter shoal typically spawns within a few screens distance of Prowl's Island. No, I didn't drop a shell. Good grief. I don't think it's worth trying to find a go find a different cookie cutter shoal. We simply have to wait this out and it will be like a day 24 Pearl, which is like horrendous. Finally. Wow, a trench coat. Good, he's tamed. Very epic. Hell yeah. Welcome back. Oh, Jakeosaurus is Beeflo. Oh, I didn't give him a name. Um, Uwu the Fourth, perhaps. Uwu the Fourth is his name, and now he is fully tamed with a rider trait, which means he will move at a higher speed than a normal Beeflo, but deals reduced damage. This is good, though, because we'll only be using him to travel around faster, and now I no longer need to feed the Beeflo as long as I don't abandon it for a long time. And now we awkwardly sit here because uh, we have to wait. Oh, yes, yeah, stay outside. No, she went in. So sad. Pearl, cough up the pearl. Do it. Do it. Do it. D do it. Do it. Do it. Or did the flower task not count? Because I did plant them all, but then I set them on fire and then picked them. Did I miss a task? Oh, it's actually Jova. I guess the flower task didn't count. Darn! Uh-oh, Pearl should have given me her pearl, but she didn't! That means the task hasn't been counted, but which one? I suspect it's the flower task because the flowers set fire, so tragically, the run is over. And I'm about to give up on the run and regenerate the world, until- Check to see if it- oh yeah, true. Alright boys, the run is over because I- I must have- uh, the flowers task didn't count, which is odd. Oh. But we will learn- oh wait, was it just the chair task that didn't count? Oh, she just had- okay, never mind, she just didn't sit on the chair. Never mind. Uh, ignore the butterflies that I just spawned. She just didn't sit on the wooden chair yet. She just sat there for a long time without checking the chair. Epic. Phew! Turns out Pearl just hadn't sat on her nice wooden chair and was taking a sweet time doing so. But as soon as she did, that was the last task tipped off and she coughed up the Pearl. She just went and sat on the wooden chair. She just didn't do that. Epic, epic, epic. No cheating and no, no. You saw nothing. That was really odd. She, she actually ignored the chair for that long. To think that I was about to quit out until astronaut said to cheat with flowers. Ah yes, I love Beeflo writing music. No, my hambat! I could make the Elding Spear at the moment. Like, I could though, but like, I, I, but like, but like, I could though. What was I grabbing grass for? I forgot. That's what happens when you get old. Forget things. Now it's day 24, so we are a couple days later than I'd like, but we'll keep going and try to make up the time. Next target is the Krabby King to acquire the third and final Celestial Altar. Uh. Sorry. We have crafted our new spear unlocked with Wigifred's skill tree. Uh, the too long didn't read of this weapon is it's her best in slot basically all the time once it's upgraded and it has a special attack which teleports you a small distance and deals air of effect damage. But for now, we can't repair it so we'll be using it very sparingly. Finally, a weapon. What is the main backpack? How will we be killing the Krabby King? Well, we're doing the very simple and uh, low risk method of killer bees. So let's catch ourselves up to 30 of those before moving on. Guess it's worth describing the method to catch killer bees uh, so beehives store a certain amount of bees. Hi. Hi. Then depending on the reason why they're leaving the hive, they're assigned to be either a worker or a killer bee. We want killer bees, so we punch the nest to cause the bees to be aggressive when leaving the hive, uh, so they're all killer bees, then simply run through them to bait out an attack, then catch one, and then repeat. With our swarm of stingers ready for deployment onto the last steps for Crab King. What is- Oh, I found it. No Chester is nicht sehr gut. Nein, 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 nein. Grabbing our gems we'll use to spawn him, and the boating equipment I'll need. Now let's- <laughs> Whoa, I have extra green gems. Let's plug in extra green gems for the haha -ha funny. But let's do it because funny. And also this run is over anyway. Um, probably. Unless I make up some sick time. What is mein driftwood? What is what is mein driftwood? Found it. Uh, nicht sehr gut grass, no no. Is that good German? Wo ist die Krabby King? And of course, we need to know where the Krabby King is. But since he holds the final altar, the astral protector points directly towards him, exposing his position to us. <laughs> Krabby King location found. <laughs> Sorry. Goodbye, gamers. Oh my goodness, Pigman is following me. 
feel free, but I will kill you for free. Thank you for the regeneration. That is very epic. Oh, no! Okay. Wo ist die Krabby King? Oh, I missed him. I found him. Ram! The setup of Crab King's arena is slightly important, as we want to keep as many rocks around Crab King remaining as possible to block any outside mobs from getting in and disrupting the fight like sharks, narwhals, and pirate monkeys. To spawn Crab King, you must slot 9 gems into him. We're slooting, uh, uh, slooting? So, slotting 3 green gems into him, which increases the amount of claws he'll spawn with, 5 purple gems, which buffs the amount of geysers that spawns when he does his geyser attack, and finally, Pearl's Pearl will buff every aspect of Crab King, but it's needed for him to drop the third celestial altar. Now for the method, we're gonna drop our backpack on the first grass boat real close to Crab King, then after Crab King spawns and begins his geyser attack, it will target the only boat deployed. After which we'll set fire to the backpack so that the bees will be unleashed soon, then deploy a second boat and get away from the bees so they don't aggro onto me. Despite our efforts to get away fast, some bees still stay aggroed onto you for some reason, not really for sure why that happens, but anyway, we can safely kill them as the rest of the bees are distracted with the Crab King. Ah oh yes, the bees are wet. Very cool. Da, 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 da. Look at all those claws! The monkey ships will never get by the Krabby King now. Now, it looks pretty simple, me rowing back and forth, but the positioning here is very precise. No healing, no, no. If I'm too far from Crab King, my boat will be out of range of his geyser attack, so he will use his freezing attack, which takes my bees out of action for a long time and might even cause them to de aggro. So, we want to avoid that by staying close, but not too close, as we absolutely do not want to get grabbed by any of his claws. This will almost definitely destroy our boat and drown us, which ends the fight. When Crab King tries to heal, there's enough attack attacks being delivered by the bees that his healing gets cancelled pretty much every time. Okay, but like why a grass bow? Well, upon testing, if a pirate monkey raid triggers, normally the monkeys will spawn nearby, come and ram your boat, steal some items and then sail away. But for whatever reason, if you're on a grass boat, not a wooden boat, the pirate monkeys will spawn, ignore you and then sail away and despawn. So using a grass boat mitigates the pirate monkey raid risk. But even if they did spawn and come for you, they'd most likely get grabbed by Crab King's claws and get drowned that way. Uh oh, shorty short. I'm preemptively rowing this way to get away from the sharky shark. It doesn't really matter if it attacks me. Oh, you know what would be neat? If the shark actually t attacked the bees after Crab King dies, that would be very epic. Uh-oh. Yeah, sharky shark is going to see me. We're going to put on the battle helmet just in case. going to bait him onto this side of the boat so we can row on this side. Stupid Sharky Shark. A shark can disrupt the fight as it jumps on your boat and deals rapid heavy damage, but with some clever positioning, you can manipulate where the shark jumps on the boat such that I can continue to row in the correct direction to avoid Crab King's geysers while avoiding the shark. So, with this in mind, the shark no longer presents any danger. Oh boy, now I'm insane as well. And Crab King is defeated. As someone said green gems are expensive, they are, but like, you get that. Okay, here we go. Bees. Shark, attack a bee, please. I'm not gonna poke this bee until the shark attacks one of the bees. All right, there we go. It's now attacked the bees. Epic. Now I am safe. In the end, the shark ended up helping me because I forgot to bring the pan flute to put the bees to sleep as I go in to grab the sunk altar piece. So the shark bit some bees and now most of the bees are aggroed onto it. Very epic. Thanks, Sharky Shark. So I grabbed the altar piece and the gems that I plugged into Crab King and some honey and meat from the bees and claws. <laughs> and we're heading back to the mainland. Since unfortunately the Lunar Island and Crab King are on opposite sides of the map, otherwise I'd go directly to Lunar Island to finish the celestial ritual. And if you plug in green gems, you get more meat. Where are you from? I am from the kingdom that is united. How you doing, Jiggy? Your content is very helpful, by the way. Love you. Wow. Thank you for the very kind words. Wow. So let's go and plug some altars in. I'm ready. Day 27 Moonstorms. It's so slow. Wrong. Yo, I actually got teleported to to to, to picking. Hello, Buffalo. Are you having fun? Oh, Dragonfly was connected to picking. Wow, cool. I'm just here for Glomma. I just want Glomma. Oh wow, look, it's Glam Glam. Hello, Glommy. Hello, Pantoot. So Glommy is actually essential for the run, though. It's funny though. In all of my old runs, I would grab Glomma and pretend that he was essential, but he just isn't. But now for this run, for how I do it or plan to do it, 
he is actually essential. You do need Glomer. But yeah, it assumes worst case scenario, which is Diclops' spawn gets messed up because you're not on mainland. So a natural Diclops doesn't spawn, so you have to force it in with the hostile flare. Now, with the Moonstorms active and Glomer rescued, it is time to do the Moonstorms. We must do three Moonstorms for Celestial Champion's spawning material and an extra Moonstorm for the same item, but to use it to upgrade our spear to its final version. Gaming. Allowing it to recharge itself and do more damage. Although in a new update coming soon, they changed the respawning requirements for Celestial Champion, but let's ignore that. But one of the materials I need to gather spoil relatively fast, so I can't start collecting that until my third Moonstorm and continue collecting into the fourth Moonstorm. Oh, so well. time is of the essence at this crucial point of the run, so let's go. This is where our potatoes and moon glass comes in. They're the ingredients to craft the astragals so that you can see inside the Moonstorm. <laughs> I can't see anything. They also double as a way to see during the sandstorm in the oasis during summer, but with a beefalo, the speed reduction doesn't hit us, so we can search the Moonstorm for <laughs> without issue. Wagstaff will give us the blueprints for Celestial Champion's spawning ground and the before-mentioned astragals. You regen so much as we afraid with this. So the Moonstorm experiment I must complete four times. This minigame consists of a timer which ticks down while Wagstaff is working on his experiment. But this timer is paused when he asks for a tool and only resumes once you give him the correct tool. All of these tools are consistently labeled something different from what Wagstaff actually asks for, but because I play this game far too much, I know the names and labels of the tools he asked for without having to check. Have sympathy for me. Far too many hours in this game. Good grief. Anyway, while we're doing this, there are moonbirds that spawn and try to attack the experiment. If the experiment takes too much damage, it fails and you must restart. There's a melee and ranged bird, the ranged bird of course being a little deadlier to the experiment, but we'll be taking out both. And since Wigfrid regenerates very nicely versus low level enemies, we won't need armor while doing this. But that's not all. We also need to deal with the environment depending where Wagstaff decides to place the experiment, and we want to gather the 15 moon gleams over the course of the four events, and the moon glass which spoils during the last two events. First event is done and immediately I consume the material to upgrade our spear. Finally, the charged elving spear is mine. This spear will be using almost exclusively for the rest of the run. This is gonna be fun. When I say fun, I mean uh, not. You know what? I can just kill the killer bees. I have area of effect damage. Oh, explosion. Wow, oh, yeah. it's amazing. So damn damn damn. Wow. Uh, I'm sorry. Making the elding spear before CC. Like, actually? Actually worth it because it really helps during this event because AOE damage good because it means if you get a bad spawn on your event like spiders or whatever It doesn't matter because you have AOE damage. Wow. Thanks Wagstaff. Second experiment done. Sing the song to revive Mr. Wagstaff to itself. True. But is he dead or is he just a hologram? Maybe he's a ghost. Maybe he is dead. Maybe he is Abigail's brother. Oh, yeah. Jakey, this is your third experiment. Why haven't you started collecting the moon glass yet? You fool. Look at all the raw meat I'll be able to get. Third experiment complete. Wow, another one. <laughs> And I do need to actually go to pick actually go to picking because I, I need I need gold. I actually need rocks as well. Actually need rocks as well, so uh Um I don't wanna do an experiment right on top of a tier three spider nest with rare pigs around. No thanks, Wagstaff, no no. Where's my spear god? Ah! Ah! ah. Oh wait, I'm stupid. I totally miscalculated. I thought this was the second to last event. I was meant to be mining moon shards in that last event. I'm so stupid. Oops. Huge mistake. Unfathomably large mistake. It's over, boys. I love teleporting. You know what I love more than... Uh, 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 yeah, that's right. I love rocks. Hello. It would seem that the that one boulder has not spawned. Oh wait, it has spawned. Wow, oh, epic. This is the big PP RNG we were worried about. That being whether the rock that contains the celestial orb would spawn or not. But it did. Huzzah! Who <laughs> says huzzah? Something from Hamlet. All this without Chester as well. Oh no, it's Deerclops. So we will have to remember that Deerclops is here somewhere, maybe. Uh oh. Why are you attacking? Tall birds? Epic. I love free meat. You might be thinking, but Jakey, why are you wasting so much time waiting for this stuff to spawn? Which, which spawns based on time. Why didn't you mine it earlier? And to that I say. I forgot. We do need a bunch of gold for this run, and we had enough up until this point, so we're trading the thousand wires we got from the ruins, which feels like ages ago, to the pig king for plenty of gold. <laughs> All right, time to go back to the bass. We're gonna make a nightmare amulet for phase three Celestial champion because without it, phase three would be um so painful and therefore take a bit longer. Uh, okay, guys, what do I need? <laughs> <laughs> Leaving Uwu the fourth here so he doesn't get blended by Celestial Chonkin. While I'm setting up for Celestial Champion, you'll notice I don't have any of Wigfrid's battle songs. Ideally, by this point, I would have had Heart Rending Ballad for extra healing, and more importantly, Weaponized Wobble, which reduces the weapon durability drain, which means I wouldn't have to special attack Celestial Champion so often to recharge my spear. So it would result in slightly uh, higher DPS. But I did not get either song as I was behind on time. Now begins phase one, the most relaxed of the phases. Celestial Champion is very predictable and easily dodged. 
dodgeable, especially with the speed burst from both my spear and the magiluminescence. During this entire fight, we'll be animation cancelling by switching our helmets or body armor to increase our DPS. We're doing a whopping 103 damage per hit. This has been increased since we're Shadow Aligned versus Celestial Champion, who is Lunar Aligned, so we get a universal 10% damage multiplier. Phase 1 isn't much of a threat, so we're saving our 90% damage reduction armor for later. Since this phase is the easiest of the three, we'll be special attacking the Celestial Champion opportunistically to attempt to keep the spear fully charged for the later phases, when special attacking effectively is much harder to pull off. And he'd be doing some of this tomfoolery to recharge my stuff. This is what the run so far has been culminating to. Let's see how smoothly it goes. <laughs> it's so much damage. Alright, let me drop this here. I don't think they're even connected. Oh no, I've went to EPs. Oh no! Devastating. Now we use crown. Phase two starts with it spinning attack, the Mom Blender 3000. This is the attack that can knock out half your health, if not more, if you get caught up in it. Now it sounds like free heal. No, Celestial Chunky, don't kill them. I want to heal off the hounds, yes. But by understanding how it works, we can easily avoid it. How it works is right when Celestial Champion initiates its spin, its speed bonus is set to the equivalent of 1.225 or your current speed bonus. Uh -huh. Sorry, I got spiked up the rectum. Whichever is bigger. This means you're going to want at least 20% speed bonus to almost match Celestial Champion's speed, but after it has started spinning, you can simply equip an extra speed bonus item to move faster than Celestial Champion. In this case, we have the spear given 20% speed bonus and then 20% given by the magical essence. Otherwise, all of Celestial Champion's attacks hit very hard and I've already taken some damage, so I can't sustain too much more damage in preparation for Phase 3. It feels so much slower at least. Oh, that was horrendous. Danger begins. The laser attacks of phase 3 can be devastating. <laughs> That's funny. You can dodge the lasers very well with uh <laughs> I, I I cancelled it. Oh I just took so much damage to the face. Along with the castult which spawned from the broken pillars that the champion spawns. Thanks, professional backseat gamer camp for pumper nickel again for telling me this. Get off your stoop. Pillar. But if you remember, I made the Nightmare Amulet to mitigate the Gestalt and the Lunacy because it artificially drops us height to zero. This way we can easily see through the Lunacy and the Gestalt's ignore us. But it does use up my body slot. I slack on the animation cancelling in the first half of Phase 3 to get familiar with incorporating special attacks into the kiting pattern of Phase 3, as my Spears durability is getting low. I missed. I can't believe it. Yeah, ah! What is this garbage? Trying to animation cancel and time the uh, the special text at the same time is actually kind of rough.
And that's the kill! Day 33 is two days slower than we'd like, but as we'll see, despite the slow Celestial Champion kill, we will make up plenty of time later. We hand wax Staff the Shard to activate the Lunar Rifts, which will spawn our first Rift exactly five days after handing him the Shard. So our first Rift will be on Day 38, Segment 3. Once we desecrate Celestial Champion's corpse, we finally acquire the last piece of endgame gear. We have acquired the Enlightened Crown. This crown drains your sanity when you attack to fire off a Gestalt, which does damage. But Wigfrid naturally regenerates sanity when she attacks and even more sanity with her sanity song which we don't have yet so this is a huge damage buff for the run as it's basically just free damage at no cost but the time crunch has not ended yet to make sure we kill all the bosses as fast as possible not only do i have to prepare and delay deer clops but i need to find and kill claws and his deer before the end of winter 2. that gives me less than 24 minutes to do so and my health is not looking good but let's go so we do have a natural deer clops in the world so we don't need to worry about spawning a deer clops, so we can forget about that. Oh, we found Claws' sack. We found Claws' sack, but we still need a deer antler to use on the sack to spawn Claws. After warming back up, the search continues. Oh, Surely the deer are. Oh, hey. I would like to special attack you, though. Wait, come back. Kind of desperately need healing. I, uh, it could still be doable, but like, the fact that I don't have any other songs makes me very sad. We're ready to start the claws fight. Unfortunately, our spear is such low durability that I made a hand bat to do the majority of the damage. Gonna start starving soon. Because I absolutely do not want my spear to break. Not only this, but my hunger is super low and my health is low too. We are not looking healthy at all, but I'll, but I'll just have to be very careful during this fight. Oh, goodness. His AoE is a circle around him. Lame. I should probably stop taking damage though. I'm even resorting to special attacking birds for mortals to evade starvation. Good grief. With enough speed burns, you can evade the pounce attack last second, but I do not want to be without armor so I don't get the one hit. So we're going to use the spear special attack to evade the pounce or simply preemptively run away. Pretty sure if you time it right, you could almost definitely dodge it with um, the spear special attack. That's Claws done. In an attempt to regenerate some health, I pick a fight with Claws' enchanted deer, which, uh, that wasn't the best idea. Oh, oh. <laughs> ah! Leave me alone! I need to cook the monster meat. Okay, finally. Oh, left game. Yeah, I can make heart running ballad now. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Malbatross Bill, that's pretty good. The Malbatross Bill Ore is unironically probably the best thing I could have gotten from Claws, as it increases my ceiling exploration speed later on in the run. So Deerclops is like around here somewhere. Now we just need to keep Deerclops busy and not die to rain or anything with no regen. We just have to find Deerclops before the end. There she is. Hello. <laughs> Guys, we've technically done it. We did indeed kill Claws. Like, technically, so you probably miss clonks from the, uh, from the meteors, yes. I would like to regen, though. I have one Starcaller's staff use left, which is enough to keep me warm through spring, even if it rains. I kind of need to sort out this food problem real fast. You know what? We're gonna go back to kill some cool birds. So why are we dancing with deer clops right now? Well, our first lunar rift won't spawn until day 38, segment 3, which means to kill crystal deer clops, we need to kill deer clops after the lunar rift is active on day 38, segment 3. But naturally, deer clops despawns once winter ends, as she will try to walk off screen, and once she does, she despawns. But as long as you keep her busy and keep her loaded in by being close by, she won't despawn even after winter ends. Ah, welcome to spring, ladies and gentlemen. So we must dance with deer clops until day 38, 
38 segment 3, so two days of spring before taking her out and fighting her crystallized cousin. But with our stats looking the way they are, waiting three days is a lot easier said than done. Yeah, the beefer will bop me off at some point, but I'm I'm too afraid to get off because it will go run for dra to Dicklops because it took a hit. Don't run back to the Dicklops. Don't run back to Dicklops. Okay, good. All right, now we're good until day 38. Well, we have to go back to the Star Wars death now. We do a little bit of regen in. We are low on food again, it seems. I would like to go kill some bees, but the rain is telling me no. Yeah, I'm gonna have to chug this monster meat and lose 20 health or 15 health. I do want to cook the monster meat, but I don't want to risk the beefalo getting hit by deer clops. Deer clops kill the frogs. I'm cold again. Oh no. At this point, I need to be less restricted, so I throw my beefalo through a wormhole to keep it safe because I still really need to regenerate both my health and my spear before we start fighting crystal deer clops. Get him, Catcoon! Dear Clubs, destroy these machines for me. What the? You can't even destroy machines. Some garbage boss. I actually just want to go insane so that I can regen off the shadow creatures. How much does this bad boy regen me for? After perhaps too long, I decide to equip my life giving amulet that I got from Claws, as its effect is every 30 seconds it will consume a 5 hunger and restore 5 health. So notable for restoring my health over time, a so thank you to one of my professional backseat gamers, uh, again, during these mini hours of running with Rickrid. Specifically, this suggestion of using a life giving amulet comes to you by Mr. Mitha. Oh, 5 health. Hell yeah! Actually, I should have should have followed what Mr. Mitha said and probably just been more in the life giving amulet for the last little bit, wore it down to 5% and then unequipped it. Alright, it's time. With A38 segment 3 passing us by, it's time to spawn Crystal Deerclops. But with such low health, and the fact that Crystal Deerclops freezes you upon being hit, I simply cannot take a hit, as it would lead to getting hit a second fatal time. And we have no fire staff to stun at her range, which means we'll need to get real close and personal to stun her with a rudimentary torch. The first stun went off without a hitch, and the resultant DPS window almost got take off down to half health. Now we must fight Dickles without stunning her, which means being very mobile and weaving between attacks while getting some damage in. Speaking of damage, Dickwops is indeed wet, so we are getting our electric damage multiplier from the charged Elving Spear. Oh, that was a mistake. Ah! That could have been really bad. Yeah, I forgot you can just do the safe method and not take damage. We did it! The hardest, most intense part of the run is over. The whole Celestial Champion storyline, followed up by a Claws and Crystal Dicklops kill before it was too late, is completed. Wow! We did it! Wow! Wow! <laughs> This first half of the run is the toughest route I've ever done to date. It definitely can be and has been done faster, but I'm happy that after so many attempts, I finally got it done. Thanks to my backseat gamers who offer tips for the run in their own backseating ways, and biggest thanks to Lord Lee, who is also running this route a lot and laid the groundwork for the route of this run. Epic. There is another method to kill Crystal Dicklops with Wigfred's spear, which was shown to me by Pan Kawiya on Twitch. Here's an example. When Dicklops isn't in her post stun state, her melee attacks are slow, so you can special attack through her to dodge them very consistently. Or pretty consistently. I have a family for Hello, hello, this is your cocaine dealer. I need you to pay me the two kilograms. Two kilograms. <laughs> ah, yes. But the run isn't over yet, as I've only defeated six of 22 boss encounters so far. Now we've unlocked our best in slot gear, it's time to tear through the remaining 16 boss encounters, and that is not an understatement. We will be tearing through them so fast, we still won't require healing food, not to mention that spring just started, so everything is wet. So mobs will take even more damage from my spear's electric damage. <laughs> I, I kind of want to get the songs next. Finally feast with the Yummy Eyeball. Ah, yes, finally we feast. No, no. Let's just reach up everything. This should be illegal. Look at how much regeneration I get for special attacking bees. This is balanced. Do not question my gameplay. So now we are cosplaying as a god in the Wigfrid run. Yes, yes. The spear gives you such insane mobility and frequent heavy air effect damage paired with Wigfrid's regeneration. It makes Wigfrid very formidable and dare I say unkillable. Oh, oh. Where does this go? 
Oh, what's this? Okay, I guess it's time for the possessed Varg. Four. Since a Lunar Rift is active, any hunt in the world, which is the little mud pile I'm searching, will lead to a Varg. Which means this is an opportunity to take out the Varg and let it mutate into the Possessed Varg to tick off another one of the Lunar bosses off the list. The strategy for the Varg is to prepare for the Possessed Varg, so we want to rush in and get the Varg and Hounds off the Qualifant Carcass to use against the Possessed Varg. So bad at the video game. Otherwise, try and fail to dodge the Varg's awfully long melee attack range and special attack to hit hounds along with the Varg. Now, the Koala Carcass will do a decent job at distracting the possessed Varg's hounds while we won the one the possessed Varg itself. When the possessed Varg does its frost breath attack, that's when we have an opportunity to stun it with our spears plan our damage. Huh? I I thought it was like, I miscalculated, don't mind me. Lol. Don't, don't worry, just don't deal with the hound, just use the koala from carcass, yes, yes. This monster meat will keep me fed for a while. You remember when we thought, at least I thought that the Vargs would, was actually hard? <laughs> the spear is so stupid. Wow, very cool, Jake. Very cool. Wow. Strategy, um, kill, get, kill, the get the, ki kill. Yes. Oh no, my only light source. Since the crown drains sanity to fire off Gestalt, it can drop your sanity below the threshold at which it provides you light. So I made sure to bring a backup light source when this happens. Come on, give me my sanity back. Give it back. It's time to die. Hello, streamer. That's a very nice lightning rod you have there. Thank you, Twitch chat. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that might not have been worth it. Right, songs, jet feathers, charcoal. We have finally acquired our first two songs. We got them a little later than I'd like, but it's fine. <laughs> I kind of want clear minded to cadenza, which is annoying because I'm gonna have to go, uh, go to, I have a telelocator staff use, right? <gasps> wow! Slippery Malbatross bill, and I just dropped my axe. <sighs> It's okay, I can make a new one. Ah, ah. Also, lightning might hit the boat, and if it does, I will be really sad. Like, I will be unfathomably sad. Well... <laughs> Guys, imagine if 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 okay, imagine if thunder hit my boat. Wouldn't that just be crazy? <laughs> Don't worry. Surely we'll out outpace the lightning. Gee, well, never mind. Oh, meowdy! It is me, Jack Subris, back at it again to pillage your little island. Next on the list is Clear Mind Cadenza, which will unlock the full potential of the Enlightened Crown. Finally, we are at maximum power. Which boss to unleash our newfound might on first, though? Oh boy. I, I like how two two first time chatters, specifically only first time chatted, just to, to laugh at me when my boat got hit by lightning. <laughs> um, excuse me, streamer, you're meant to kite! Right. What's next? Oh, my brain, there's too much fog. Oh. I want to go back to the ruins to make like two full sight suits, or as many as I can. Looking very sexy today, Jake. Wow. Is that perhaps the gayest Twitch chatter in this Twitch chat? C confirm or no? More like least gay. Ah, I see. Understandable. Where's my nightmare feel? What is mine, green gem? No. Hmm. I think I've got some food. We're gonna make some uh, meaty stew with dragon fruit as a filler. Hell yeah. Okay, guys, let's go back to the ruins. You remember when we had a really cool ruins generation? <laughs> no way, real cat person television? Got all these free balls just for me. Time for death. Ow! Oh, sorry. Oh, another one. Can the worms spawn yet? Like, damn, they're so loud. Ah, wet are we? Oh dear. What the? I clicked. Guys, did you know if you fed your mom a glowberry, she glows? Bam, that's your mom. What am I doing? Epic! Are you Thorsite? Oh no, there actually is Thorsite there. Oh. Epic. One well, knocks you out, um, Charlie. She punches you right in the balls and it kicks you out. Oh, uh, 
These Thorsite body armor pieces will be our primary armor for the rest of the run, as we want to keep our head slot free for the enlightened crown. There is no escape from me, children. I don't want to take on those babies, though. There's too many. Go back to Bass. Yes. No escape, children. Ugh. Even without animation cancelling, you can see how we melt through enemies. Our DPS is even higher than that of Wolfgang with a Dark Sword. <laughs> But not quite as high as Wally with Spicy Volko Jenny with a Dark Sword versus a Wet Enemy. But he's French, so he doesn't count. We actually don't need the down feathers in this run for anything, but we did need to take out the Moose Goose and the babies to tick the boss encounter off the list. Haha, -ha, I hit your babies. You've been pranked by Miss Wiggles. Triple. Oh, I didn't hit one of them. Triple. The children have been slaughtered. Right, that's Moose Goose done. Oh my goodness, that's the prototype of Spear. Yes. What else do you need for Toadstool? And hypothetically, he'll be wet. Wet. All right, let's go. We have to actually go find him now. How much do you weigh? 200 Great British Pounds-ish. I am currently a meat titan. Due to the air of effect and the electric damage of my spear, tentacle pillars crumble fast. Yo, worth it? Wait, worth it? Can I... Can I... Can I... Can I just... Can I just... Thanks. Whee! This is some garbage. What am I looking for? All right, Toastal. Toastal, are you here? And I trigger a bunch of gestalt and healing while taking out the baby tentacles, which makes tentacle pillars one of the best recharge stations for my spear, health, and sanity. Like, it's good that it's still raining, because Toastal will be wet. I will come back for you later, because I want to prioritize getting Toastal while he's wet rather than you. Goodness gracious. Buflo, please. Epic. That's why we've been taking out tentacle pillars, in hopes of finding ancient fuel weavers lair for later. Please, please be here. But like, please be here though. <sighs> ah! Sorry. Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't hold it. I'm so sorry. That will happen again. Toadstool with no weather pains, which means we'll be using the method from the last video, but taken to a new extreme. The strategy at first is simply activating all of my songs and cranking my DPS to the max because Toadstool is wet. I have my crown, my songs, and my multiple body armor pieces to animation cancel with. Once Toadstool summons his spore caps, we set them on fire with a combination of torches or fire staffs if the spore caps are hard to reach. Then drag Toadstool behind a pond away from the spore caps, since when spore caps burn, they leave behind a rotting cloud which damages and staggers you, and those clouds stick around for a while. While these spore cap trees are up, Toadstool gains various buffs, most notably speed and defense, so this is where we'll prioritize special attacking him to regenerate our spear rather than animation cancelling for extra DPS, since his defense is just so high. Toadstool wants to spawn his next set of spore trees, he begins walking back to the center of the arena, which is a big window for free DPS, as he won't attack during this time. Then once he reaches the middle, or he has been attempting to get back for some time, he begins spawning the next wave of spore trees. Those animations were being cancelled. While he's got huge damage reduction, I just, this is the time I should probably take the special attack him constantly. During the fight, we utilize the pamphlet to give us a bigger DPS window, as Toadstool spawns spore caps based on a timer, and when Toadstool is asleep, this timer is paused, so your damage window is longer once he wakes up. Oh, could have been a perfect kill. Otherwise, we just tear through his total with a practical DPS of almost 400, 398, thanks to our best in slot gear and the animation cancelling. For reference, Wolfgang with a Dark Sword without animation cancelling has a DPS of 291, so we're pummeling Toadstool a 37.4% harder than Wolfgang would. Oh, it's over. Oh dear. Goodness gracious. Sloppy as hell, we've used a path of full sight, massive skill issue. Wow! That spear do be dangerously low though. The Todoth Stooleth is dead. Yeah, one fire staff would have been plenty. Wow, worth it. Don't mind me, just recharge. Boys, it's time for in gaming music. After chipping the marble off of the Nightmare Warpig's pillars, we can cause them to vibrate, freeing him. Then we utilize the Nightmare Amulet to go insane to kill the Nightmare Rat things attacking the Warpig before the fight begins. An interesting interaction with the Spear and the Nightmare Warpig is that his typical attack is he runs towards you and does a directional attack. 
Oh, terrible at the video game. Truly abhorrent at the video game. So by teleporting through him with Spear's special attack, not only do you dodge his attack, but you also get some damage in. And dodging this attack is essential, since when you dodge three of them without getting hit, the weapon gets tired and you get a free damage window. We're in phase two and the web pig has unlocked his punching attack, which creates craters in the ground that slow you drastically. But fortunately, it is also a directional attack with a short lunge range, so we can special attack through him to dodge it. But we crucially need to use this punch attack to destroy the pillars that once caged the web pig as they drop the dreadstone, which is essential for the run, as it unlocks hard mode in the caves, which allows us to fight a different boss later. All the while in this phase, the web pig is constantly regenerating to punish you if you take too long and don't play aggressively. pretty hard to slip around. All the pillars are knocked down. Good might nightmare the weapon. Hiya! Death by counterattack. Nightmare Werepix Dreadstone is essential, like we said, but also the pure horror will be useful, but funnily enough, the marble will be most useful as it will make us marble suits for armor later on. Bully. We killed everything we came to down here. So now we put the shadow pieces in place. Another portal activated. That bright light means a lunar rift has grown into a larger rift, making it visible on the map. But for this run, we never actually need to visit a lunar rift, but we still want something from the rift. But we'll see what later. Also, we'll talk about lunar rift timing mechanics later, but for now, just know that when we see the bright light, it means the lunar rift will be up for at least 6.25 days, assuming we don't mutate any bosses. Oh. It's in a beautiful spot. <laughs> it's fine, I have the Elding Spear, so it's not too bad. I love Clear Miser's Cadenza always being active. Hell yeah. Nation with it, say it's put in loop. But I agree. It's like a man. I think it's rare, basically. What? Spear could do. You? Me. Wins, but the. Twin's fight isn't too special to fight with our gear, except we can special attack the boss's minions to help kill them faster because AOE damage. Otherwise, we are indeed pan tooting them to sleep and animation cancelling the hell out of Retisnator. I decided I'd rather deal with less minions and spasmatism rather than more minions and less dashing of spasmatism. I'm animation cancelling between the Thulzite body and the Magic Luminescence. That way, I not only attack faster, but can easily choose extra speed moments with the mag, or I can quickly tank a hit with the Thulzite body. I mean, like how the Gestalt soloed that uh, minion. More grass! Right in back. Oh boy, the Luna Hail. But why not get three? Luna Hail can happen while a Luna Rift is active and gifts us with moon shards from the sky. Except they hurt you when they hit you. Otherwise, we're making pamphlets for future boss fights. Oh, he's phase two, but that one isn't. Spasmatism is where things can get risky. I can either equip the mag for more speed, but if I get hit, I have no armor on, or I wear armor, but I'll be slower, so risk getting hit easier. I can dash too! I'm gonna need more silk for fishing rod and stuff. So let's do that. We're just gonna gather materials while we're killing time for the uh the uh ab ab ow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah, my meaty's juice! No no. It's for me. Oh, you want to fight? I I'd love the Elven Spear. If I could marry something, it would be the Elven Spear. The Elven Spear cured me of skill issue. Uh-oh. 
Against Spider Queen, the biggest danger is the horde of spiders that usually accompany her, but that risk is mitigated by the Elding Spear's AoE special attack, so this is an easy fight, despite me taking so many hits. Nice. We've been once again cured of skill issue. Gene Bob Jason. Never cheating. Also, that turned into a dead tree right as I was about to chop it down. That makes me very sad. of terror have been defeated i win terraria once again let's go on the ocean man let's go there for a bit mm. ah! <gasps> it's raining okay never mind we're doing bee queen prep instead let's do that let's just go kill sharky shark you stay here buffalo this is where my other ship perish oh is this a malbatrol spawner right here Yo, there's a Malbatrol spawner right here! The ocean content is set, boys. While the rain gets started on making the world wet, we're gonna head out and kill the shark boss we found earlier. Oh. So the new shark boss has some knockback attacks and predictable attack patterns, all of which are completely mitigated by the Elding Spear special attack since I teleport away or behind the boss to, uh, to basically prevent them. Also, regardless of how rainy it is, this boss will always be wet, so we've got maximum damage. In this arena, the floor is made of ice, so you can slip. My piggyback went flying, that's funny. The chance you slip is based on your speed burst, and you can cancel a slip by ceasing to move. Just hold F. I can hold F harder than you. Normally, the shark's jumping attack knocks you back far enough such that you can't hit him before he goes under the ice. But by attacking him before he goes under the ice, it stuns him so he doesn't become untargetable under the ice. Freeze! Who is that? Frozone? Oh, I hit my lightning. Didn't see that one coming. So, thanks, Marble Armor, knockback resistance for completely mitigating this, uh, this mechanic of the fight. Yeah! <laughs> Big tuner, it's over. Oh, my piggyback. Please don't drown. Good grief, I would have been so sad if that drowned. Here, can I have some boots? I have no use for them, but like, funny. Yo, was it? Oh, that was a heavy one? Hell yeah. Trading a maximum of three times with the shark can reward you with one or two boots per trade, depending on how heavy the fish you traded was. Oh yeah, that, that's, that's a good, that's a good fish right there. These boots basically create temporary wormholes for the ocean, which can teleport you and your boats. Okay, lightning, please don't hit my boat as soon as I hop on it. Teleport me there. This is useful if you want to travel far across the map on the ocean, but luckily for me, I've already found all the ocean content that I need, but we'll still use the boots later. Worth it. Huge time save. You see that? That's crazy. And we're back in time because everything's wet. Why is there a bright shade here? I have a farm. Why are you not infesting my farms? Because I do want bright shade staffs. Hold F hard, boys. Oh, I have to build a tackle receptacle for that. I haven't done this in so long because I get it for free. Look at the devastation in this biome. Where'd my spear go? Give it back! So the strategy for Bee Queen is... There, there kind of just isn't one. The Elden Spear just allows you to brute force through Bee Queen with very little healing and just some armor. Pair this with some animation cancelling and Bee Queen gets absolutely melted and the Elden Spear special attack devastates the minions so fast that Bee Queen can't spawn them fast enough to actually keep them on the field for long. I kill them faster than she spawns them. We do have some backup healing just in case and some pamphlets if we need a quick breather or I just want to speed up the kill. Otherwise, enjoy the decimation of Bee Queen, the cause of so much pain in boss runs. Phase 2 Bee Queen begins where she spawns more Grumble Bees than Phase 1. Not that it matters, because we still kill them all and the DPS Bee Queen before she could summon more minions. Air effect damage wins again.
and after only one wave of minions, we push BP into phase 3, where she screams to make her minions move fast and chase me down, but they need to be alive for that attack to come to me. <laughs> No charging! But her minions are simply dying too fast, leaving BP screaming at her lack of minions. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Don't even need pamphlets. I'm sure I'll just kill her Dumblebees and they they don't come back fast enough. Most of the time. And finally, phase 4, which is the same as phase 3, but she screams more often, which is a benefit to me, as that means more DPS windows as Beakling is sat there for longer, screaming and not attacking or moving. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is stupid. Though. Like, I'm just farming Gestalt by special attacking her grumble feet. <laughs> oh, that was really stupid. Last time I didn't even spam special attacks. I actually had to use the pamphlets because of such low on health, but like, that was so much easier. Why was that so much easier? You are actually a god. You cannot be killed if you're Wigfrid with all of her gear. Well, uh, it's new moon in a few days, so now let's go kill Malbatross, I suppose. Well, we know where, where a Malbatross spawner is, which is quite lucky. Oh right, jelly beans are pretty good. I won't need them. Like, I'm pretty sure I won't need them, but like, jelly beans are pretty good. Maybe my eyes are lagging and uh, it's actually not jittering, it's just my eyes are jittering. My eyes just don't work, man. Damn. Hello? Please grab on or I will be sad. Please! It's evening time and it's raining. Oh, two bottles, hell yeah. Now I can definitely buy the rainy day look. Oh, oh wait, these have taken place because, right, I transplanted these. True. Oh, well. That's a shame. Okay, I can kill her bees. Oh, yo, Pearl, can I get, like... Wait, just stay outside, though. Can I get the rainy day lure? Thanks, homie. Oh, you want to fight? Oh, that's the wrong weapon. Oh! This will be a quick kill, it's fine. Pan flutes, raining, and animation cancelling? Malbatross is about to get shredded. if we had an anchor. Unfortunately, that would have cost me time, so I opted to not use an anchor, which means we can get pushed away easily by Malbatross's waves. But with the power of pan flutes and the Malbatross beak from claws, we can outmuscle her waves. Ram them full speed! Full speed! <laughs> now, I don't care for any of this, so I'm leaving. All right, I'm done with the sea content now, which is cool. Jelly beans, just in case. Starkle is deaf because, um, yes. Bees might come out. Yeah, let's just clear them. Shadow pieces. Each time we kill one of these, the remaining pieces will level up, which leaves us with a choice of which piece do we want to be fighting at maximum power. Now, usually I use lots of speed and fight the level 3 rook so that I can dodge him, but this time, since we have the Elding Spear and can teleport, the Shadow Bishop is easy picking due to how its targeting works. So we're destroying the knight, then the rook, and finally 1v1ing the bishop. Bishop's attack consists of disappearing, then targeting you, then teleporting on top of you to deal continuous heavy damage, which keeps you staggered. So right as the bishop disappears, we'll teleport using the Elden Spear to escape all but one of its hits. That was neat. No aggro animation before it attacked. It's kind of rude.
and the animation cancelling made short work of the vision. Shadow Heart acquired the Fuel Weaver. Goodbye. Defeated by the Gestalt. Yes, yes. Very epic. Wow, amazing, epic, wow. <coughs> Mobs learning to animation cancel. Yeah, that's not allowed. That strategy is only for me. Oh, yes, a Dark Sword. I can't wait to use this brand new Dark Sword I just acquired. Wow. Let's just toss it there so it doesn't crash. Or ideally doesn't crash. Uh, not too bad. Could have been more devastating. I decided that I wanted the Malpatrus watering can, so I need some driftwood. Heading back to Prowl's Island to grab that driftwood, I find that her berry bushes are being infested by bright shades. These are the things I wanted from the Lunar Rift earlier, but I don't want them out to sea, so I toast and dispatch them. That way the bright shades will infest closer to my base so I can kill them for their resources later. What do I need to make the bright smithy? Five moon glass and five moonstone. Worth me going to Lunar Island with my final boot? Do I have one more boot somewhere? Oh, what? I, I took that out of the thing! What? That's some garbage! I totally took that out of the crockpot. This waterfowl can will enable a method of cooling down my thermal stone in summer, which frees up my head slot, which is essential, since I really want to be using my enlightened crown all the time. Oh, it is raining. Okay, never mind. We're gonna go do Fuel Weaver. So, what do we need for Fuel Weaver TV? My three songs, my full sight suit, and I can bring a backpack because I can teleport across the gaps. Five dreadstone. Is it five or six? Guys, what do I need for Fuel Weaver? <laughs> Sorry. Hammer. True. Bulls. Yo. A better attitude, huh? Let's go! If I had a bright shade staff, that'd be cool, but I do not. Yeah. Clear my cadenza will be enough this one. Oh, ancient key. Guys, watch this! Watch! <sighs> Whoa! That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that, Jack Suris. Very cool. Alright, Buffalo can stay here. Wow, full sight for me. Oh! Uh, lock it up! Leave me alone, stupid bishops. Are you just not gonna de-aggro? Ancient Fuel Weaver, with without weather pains, or a lazy explorer. We must use everything we've learned and acquired to bring him down. Usually you want a lazy explorer to escape the bone snare attacks of Ancient Fuel Weaver, but we will be using and abusing our Elden Spears quick 1.5 second special attack cooldown, teleport out of the bone cages easily and without any cost. Unfortunately, Fuel Weaver is dry, so we're not dealing the best possible damage, but our damage will still be nuts, as we have all three songs to support health sanity and our spears durability loss reduction. The crown will also be firing off gestalts the entire fight and will be animation cancelling to do more attacks and fire off even more gestalts. I'm animation cancelling by swapping between the mag and the full sight body to give me the option of you know moving faster or tanking a hit with the armor on just like the twins fight. has begun and I'm immediately hunting down the shadow hands to knock out Fuel Weaver's invulnerability shield. Also, I didn't lure Fuel Weaver to a more favorable part of the arena, but that won't matter too much since the healers that spawn under Fuel Weaver I can deal with by using the Spear's AOE special attack to destroy them before Fuel Weaver eats them, stopping him from healing. Now we want to end this fight fast, so I'm choosing Tank Fuel Weaver while animation cancelling with two full set bodies to reduce the incoming heavy attacks. Time for death by Gestalt! Death by Lunar Island! Oh wait, I can't. Death by Fist! Wow! Charlie by Queen, I have a present for you. Yes, 
Yes! Yes! Wow! <sighs> What's my reward? Wow! Mamma mia! Sorry. I'm not sorry. And now we humbly, calmly leave. <laughs> oh, be gentle. Ah! Bone armor is pretty neat. Initially, I thought I'd be using a bone armor from here on out to animation cancel with, as the bone armor's effect is every five seconds when you would get hit, it negates the hit entirely. But while the armor is on cooldown, it does nothing. But a secret shorter cooldown is when you put the armor on, it goes on a much smaller cooldown before it activates. And so if I were animation canceling with it, it would always be on cooldown and would never protect me. So bone armor is a no-go for the animation canceling, unfortunately. So we'll have to stick with the full sight and marble suits. So I think Antlon is down here somewhere. It was like south of where the vault boots were. So I would like to camp the enlightened crown the entire time, but unfortunately, you cannot because you want to teleport. So you avoid the entire fight just by teleporting. Ah! Unless you scare you like that and you just like fat finger the right click instead of the left click, but I still manage to not get hit. So if you have the crown on, you, if you try to like teleport to a destination that you can't see, it doesn't work. Oh, I took a hit. I'm so bad at the game. All right, now Dragonfly. What bosses have I not done? It seems like this is ending way too fast. So it's just Dragonfly, then Eye of Terror. Eye of Terror, like kind of big oof. I should have killed Eye of Terror at like some point early on, but I didn't. And so I just did twins first. Oh yeah, and the Ink Blights. The Ink Blights will activate on day 62 or something. Um, Is that everything I need, guys? <laughs> Are we ready to water our dragonflies? Love your YouTube videos. <clears throat> Thanks, I'm glad you liked them. I forgot my thermal stone. Sorry, I can make a new one. Actually, no, I can't. Actually, yes, I can. Here is the cooling off method I alluded to earlier. Using a watering can or a water fowl can, you can drop a thermal stone and something flammable, then light the flammable thing on fire and begin watering the fire. But by holding the right click button, you keep watering the same area. Each time you water the thermal stone, it reduces its temperature by a flat amount. Do this enough and you can reduce your thermal stone down to minus 20 degrees, which will keep you from overheating in summer for up to 11 minutes. That's better than an eyebrella and luxury fan combo, while more importantly, freeing up our head slot for the enlightened crown. Just a little more mining. A hound attack. But that's not where the gardening tactics end. You see, Dragonfly's wetness meter is similar to that of the player, in that Dragonfly doesn't simply inherit the world's wetness when she spawns, like other bosses. Instead, she must be actively loaded and spawned in for the world's rain to make her wet over time, just like the player. Or you can simply make her wet in other ways, like, uh, watering her. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, water your dragonflies. So after setting up the traditional dragonfly walls, we begin the fight and immediately send dragonfly to EPs with the Mantis Sleep Mask Pro, <laughs> and then we begin to water dragonfly. Remember to water your dragonflies. Watering dragonfly four times maxes out her wetness, but we're also cooling down our thermal stone. But why are we watering dragonfly though? Well, electric damage of course. It's not raining, so she won't naturally get wet, so instead we water her to unlock our full damage potential, as of course the Elden Spear gets damage boost when fighting things that are wet. This insane damage plus the crown plus the animation cancelling knocks Dragonfly down easily and forces her to go spawn her larvae. Goodness gracious, that was disgusting. I might puke from that. We could almost definitely have done this kill without walls, but I hadn't actually practiced animation cancelling and watering versus Dragonfly, so I wanted to mitigate any chance of failing the kill, especially given how deep into the run we are. Tactically take a hit so my stuff stops draining. In the 11 seconds and 56 frames Dragonfly was knocked down just then, we dealt 4,268 damage, which is a DPS of 357. I even messed up a few animation cancels, but still, we're out DPS and Wolfgang with the Dark Sword. As for the armor of choice during this fight, I knew I'd be tanking Dragonfly and I wouldn't need to do much moving around, so I opted to go for Marble and Fool's Light suits. Wigfrid, more like Godfrid. Ah, yes. Aha! Marble provides a massive 95% physical damage reduction, but at the cost of slowing you down. But that doesn't matter for this fight. Uh-oh. My Dragonfly has stopped being wet? Let's fix that. Set like a player, Dragonfly can also dry off due to ambient heat over time. So it requires watering to make her wet again. Water your Dragonflies. Keep them nice, strong, and healthy. You only need to water them four times. This time, when we stunned Dragonfly, our DPS surpassed 400, thanks to some pretty good and consistent animation cancelling. Wow, very cool. Oh, I need to special attack things. Gross. 
I can fight them with the lava. I can fight them all! I am Godfrid. I am god of uh, destruction and uh, and gestalts uh, and uh, and uh, mm -hmm. oh, I forgot to water my dragonfly. One second, how could I forget to water my dragonfly? I have Terra at like a reasonable time and then I killed the twins when I did. That would have been the, like the last boss to die without a time gate? Question mark? If I didn't goof up the Eye of Terra? Because I did Eye of Terra never. I should have done it really early, like as soon as um I got there. Eh. When did I kill the twins? Oh wait, I don't know. I, I remember. Remembering is hard. So that's cool. Pre-day 60 for all the bosses, except not really, because I messed up the time with Eye of Terror. Wow, cool. Day 59. That's kind of nuts. That's like way faster than my other run. I thought this was a bad run, but like you just shred through everything. And I, also in this run, I animation canceled and the last one I kind of didn't. Live commentary, Jakey, is correct. We have technically killed all the bosses which don't have a time gate on them. Whoa, day 59. Wow. <laughs> that easily blows my previous Wolfgang record out of the water. But the Eye of Terror could have been killed earlier with bad time like if you killed the twins during winter, causing the Eye of Terror to spawn faster, while the Ink White Trio aren't available yet because I killed Fury that after Toadstool. Ultimately, we will always need to wait for Berger to spawn to fight both Berger and Armored Berger, but ignoring that big time gate, we only have two things left to kill, Ink White Trio and the Eye of Terror. Anyway, uh, it's gaming time. I'm pretty sure I've killed everything. Dragonfly is dead. We've watered our dragonflies. We have two Dresden bodies that we never used. I would like to make a Bright Shade Staff for the Ink Blights. We're just gonna go Lunar Island. Why? What? You remember the good old days, as in yesterday, where I was like, man, this run is so over. I, I killed Slicer Chepard day 33. That's terrible. Shaking my head, my head. And then like, oh, day 59, everything except Eye of Terror was killed. Like, that's very epic. Haha, <laughs> yes. We're booting. Why is my spear so low? That makes me sad. Oh! My boat, my boat is a survivor. Oh wait, don't, don't drift too far. Oh, I can't see anything. Your singing is beautiful, thanks, man. Well, I should have just picked up some Moonglass after the Celestial Champion kill. What idiot! It was 5-5, five, five, right? <laughs> Sorry. Um, yes, I don't think I need anything more than that. Time to L E F. Uh oh. Remember, gamers, remember to water your thermal stones. Uh, make sure to set it on fire. Such a thirsty rock, yep. He needs to grow big and strong. I don't know how many times I watered it, but whatever. Yum, yum, yum! All right. Like, the Ink Blight Trio, like, if you're not Wigfrid, you could actually die to them pretty easily if you don't have planet armor. Da, 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 Bright Smithy. Da, 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 What's up, guys? It's your boy, the Bright Smithy, back at it again. Another oh, gaming session. Ooh, eyebrella in case it is acid raining. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Da -da -da! All right, I need special attack things. Wow. Wow. The double stop hit the one I wasn't aiming for. Uh, you actually land a hit. Actually. Speak a little bit of German. Nine, 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 nine. Th is, that, is that accurate? All right, Buffalo, stay here. Otherwise, you will perish. I don't see a fissure yet. Pop! I thought the fishes didn't need to be opened at all. Um, excuse me, I would like to recharge my spear, please. That is true. The fishes do not need to be opened for the Ink White Trio to spawn, but they aren't currently active since I killed Fuiva on day 57, which means the Ink Whites won't be active until sometime during day 62. So you're too early, live commentary, Jokey. Recharging spear, sanity, and health at tentapuddles. Tentapills. Ah, uh, yes, tentapuddles. Recharging spear, sanity, and health at tentapillars feels illegal because it's just so good. Kind of like when the little tentacles used to drop one Wartox soul for each one before they nerfed it. Like, am I dumb? I've never had such a clean farm. Mm, maybe. I forgot. Should I risk the bee flow? Because if I get hit by the rook, I'll get knocked off. Hello? Watching out for that rook. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> no, I thought he was gonna hit me. I was so scared. <laughs> if I wasn't Wigfred, um, I might have died there. I got slammed by that guy. But I should have focused the rook. The rook has the most health. I think I control left onto the knight. Also, you could I could have mined the dreadstone um outcrop, but I don't care. So yeah, bright shades death makes that fight ridiculous. Like it's a it, like it's actually worth making the bright shades death in a speed run, like just for those because they die so fast. Y'all ready for some farming music? Right. Oh no! Quick, what are those? What are those feathers? Epic. Butter! I have no seeds. I can't spawn Lord of, the, Lord of the Fruit Flies. There is nothing more for me to kill. I guess I could go kill Ancient Guardian, but like, why though? Oh, what the hell? Does it not count if it, you're on a beefalo? Oh yeah, it doesn't count if you're on a beefalo. Well, interesting. Lord Lee, tell me, what were you up to in your stream? Did you kill all the bosses in like three days or something? I died some monster- <laughs> Everybody laugh at Lord Lee because he died to monster meat. Haha. <laughs> Lol. Let's make a moon caller staff. What if hypothet- Oh, I've got no moonstone. No moonstone. Can't make moon caller staff. Can't fix it. No, no. Are you going to take another full day? Damn. Don't fire my glommy goops. Oh, no. Wait. I can't. Wait. I can't put it out. Uh, there we go. Perfect. Everybody look away. You saw nothing. Low seeds. Flowey. Quick, turn it on! <laughs> nah! If only our animation cancelled harder. Quick, go tactically go kill Celestial Champion to force a full day of night to spawn Eye of Terror faster. Like, actually, like, actually not worth it. Oh, wait, hold on. Actually, actually, we're about to get ourselves a Glossomer saddle. Hell yeah. How many, isn't it 54 for a Glossomer saddle? Oh, what, wait, huh? Oh, I still have construction amulets. Never mind, boys. It's 34. We're a lot closer than we thought. It doesn't come back to that form. We did it, boys. The shadow manipulator is no more. Perfect. Oh, make sure to water your science machines. I mean, your alchemy engines. Worth. I don't really see much of a difference, but we are moving faster now. We're moving. Oh, the Krampus. Hello, what did you just steal? Excuse me. This is mine. Wait, come back. I can face tank all of you. It's time to perish. Wo ist mein Krampussack? Your German is flawless. Thanks, man. I don't know what burnt there, but I saved the Glomagoop, and that's what's important. Okay, now we're waiting for Borgir, right? Yes, Jakey, we are indeed waiting for Berger to spawn, and that won't happen for another hour, so you'll have to keep yourself busy so, you know, you don't fall into the, the depths of insanity. Wo ist mein second life-giving? Ah, <laughs> Well, right, boys, let's go catch us some spores. Do five spores. Ha <laughs> ha! We are now Redfred. Oh my goodness, this is horrifically red. Yo! Oh, dude, but it's so bright without the red. And then the, the red makes it really dim, and then it's just like hyper red. All right, we're going full red. We are now evil Fred. We've hit in our uh, evil phase. Oh my goodness, it does look. Yo, it, I look infrared. That does look nuts. I be looking infrared. Good grief. I'm way too fast for these monkeys. It's actually insane. I'm simply way too fast. <laughs> I'm scared. My B-flow might die. Actually, what am I talking about? My guy has AOE damage and he just doesn't use it. Did I go to the wrong branch? I went to the wrong branch. <laughs> oh, the ink lights are back. Um, no thanks. Time to die! You caused me so much pain earlier at the start of my run when I was underpowered. Now I am overpowered. Idiot, I don't even want your pathetic purple gems. Red Fred is here to deliver your doom. Yes, not much to see here. We've seen good animation cancelling versus Dragonfly, but Agent Guardian hasn't seen our full power unleashed by the Crown and Spear yet.
idiot. Wow, guys, another lazy explorer. Okay, I don't care for any of this. I still drink things, man. Aha! Jakey wins again. What did I come here to craft? Oh, yeah, this. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Look how red everything is, though. But, like, look how red everything is. That's crazy. Wow! I will kill you all. And I will devour you whole. Oh, I don't, I'm not, I don't have a nightmare amulet on me. I have to go grab that. Oh, new friends! My new friends are so low down. Finally, bright shades. We already got enough bright shade husks so we could craft the staff, but we finally acquired them in our garden. Really? You got knocked out just, did all three gestalts hit you? Like, damn. We must kill their roots before taking out their main body. Hitting their main plant without knocking out its root makes it deal a heavy hit, and a straight gestalt can cause this heavy hit, so I must be careful. If you hit Glomma, I will destroy your entire family. Surely there's a pumpkin here. No, 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 no pumpkin. Oh yeah, I can put this down. Guys, look, I can make Wigfrid's best in slot in like one scenario. Making the vo this and this true. We did it, boys. Oh yeah, I should have made Umbrella. Yeah, realistically, you, you wouldn't actually make those. Time to use the theater. True, I do have time to use the theater now. Where is it? Oh, new friends. Three new friends. Jiggy, how did you know that that one bright shade was gonna die to the gestalts? <clears throat> well, my kind, my small child, it's because I was counting my hits because I'm a nerd. I hope this bottle stays open. Wow, a block of jelly. So I'm gonna go and investigate. Oh! Wait, it's not a max size yet. This is interesting. Oh, I left my beeflow bell at the base. That's unfortunate. Guten Tag, you are mine meatball, mamma mia. Right, let's go find the theater. Finally, it is Otam. What if, hypothetically, Baradrir just immediately spawned? Also, though, I had loads of extra bishop and knight heads in this world. Piroji. No, no, pierogies is the objectively correct way to say it. Yes, yes. Don't ask the Polish people. They have no idea what they're talking about. Wo ist die theater? Theater? Wo ist die, die theater? Wo ist? Pierogies. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Piroji. Back at it. Whoa, a bright shade. Oh, right, I never found Chester in this run. Let's find Chester. He's like here somewhere, surely. I still didn't see him as I was running around. Was that, was that him? Oh, he's right here. Oh, dude, that was so weird. He was really far off the path. He was like j just just outside the mosaic. He was way off the path. That's bizarre. Quick, Mr. Beefalo, we must hunt down this evil koala. Hiya! Kill! Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I've been hit. Nice. Onward! Oh, we have new friends. Oh, baby, a triple. No, my leafy meat. I'm sorry. If only I had fireproof falsetto. Please tell me you have one more wave of bright shades that's gonna come out on like day 79. Can we run a command? No, no, that's cheating. Oh, it's gone. That's a big old shame. That means we're not going, we're getting, going to get a day 80 and a half portal. Oh no, our Lunar Rift despawning on day 75 is a big problem. Beardra usually spawns around day 76, and for Beardra to mutate into Armored Beardra, the Lunar Rift must be active. So now I have to wait for the next Lunar Rift to spawn on day 80, even if Beardra spawns before that. Quite unlucky. So, alright, it's time for Lunar Rift spawning mechanics. Um, this is somewhat avoidable, kind of, not really. By killing Celestial Champion earlier, and strategically killing the mutated Varg later or earlier, depending on your Lunar Rift's spawn day. Uh, so Arquil made this illustration for me to explain how Lunar Rift's timing works, which is very cool. And what it's saying is each Lunar Rift has four to six bright shade waves to it. Each wave sends out bright shade spirits to infest plants. And then once the rift runs out of waves, the rift collapses. But when a boss becomes its mutated version, so that's when a bright shade infests its corpse, the number of waves the current rift has is reduced by one. That is if the rift is in stage three already. So ultimately it's still kind of RG whether your rift lines up with Bear to spawn, since rift spawns with variable amount of waves and variable times for the portal to grow, but the consistent thing is the rift takes 5 days to spawn, then 4 to 5 days to grow from stage 1 to stage 2, then pure brilliance begins spawning around the rift, and then it takes another 4 to 5 days to grow from stage 2 to stage 3, where the bright shade waves begin happening. So it's basically just bad RNG, it despawned right before Bear just spawned in, so unlucky. It's theater time. Oh, Bear just coming on day 75, epic. <laughs> 
Wow. We did it, boys. The performance is done. Oh, wait, what the? We just got a, is that a free fishing rod I just saw? Hell yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Sea fishing rod? Worth. What is the deep or I found him. All right, Berger, you have fun. I'm going to go kill the ink blights again because I can't kill you for a while. Hello, my four friends. Oh, wait, that's, that's a lot of friends. I just saw there was another one hidden right there. Epic. Is the bishop dead? There we go. Wow. We got him again, boys. Huh. That's meant to despawn. You can ride around at full speed, just take a little bit of damage. Oh, oh, the rift closed. Oh, that makes sense. Darn, we were too late, boys. Wong machine number one. This game is so much harder if you leave all the settings at default. <laughs> so when you're insane, you can't see anything. When the fight starts, everything shakes. Oh, it's glad jelly beans on me, that's why. What if you wanted to make the basic beautiful? Ah! I think. Same I think. Wow, it's beautiful. The best has been best. That was a beautiful Yukus. Go away, uh, you follow. Our final Lunar Rift will be spawning soon, so let's finally get started with killing Berger. This fight is quite simple, and Berger is one of the few bosses who utilize directional attacks, allowing me to dodge by moving around or teleporting behind him. Or her, uh, I'm not sure, unlucky. Ah, I'm terrible at the game. It. It is a beast. Until Berger does his, or her, its slam attack, which hits everything in an area around it. Ah! Please become mutated, Berger, or I'll be really sad. Good. Now, Armored Berger. In my humble opinion, this boss is probably the most dangerous in the entire run. Because I forgot this boss is actually kind of hard, as the fight can go south very fast with just a few mistakes. And the fact that Armored Berger is a heavy hitting planet enemy, so if you get hit, you get hit very hard. Armored Berger has the same attacks as a normal Berger, but with extra damage, and the slash attack has a small lunge to it. Dodging Armored Berger's exclusive attack, the Butt Slam, gives us a small window to hit him with our spear, causing the boss to get stunned for a short time, allowing a window of DPS. We did it! Technically day 18, which isn't very impressive. But ignoring Berger's time gate, I have terror respawn time, and the ink bite time gate, then we killed the last boss dragonfly on day 59, which is way faster than any of my previous runs. Wow! We did it! Wow! The run is officially over. Unless you're counting mystery turtles, then it's not. Wow! Mm My crown was not active most of that fight, I'm pretty sure. We did it! Wow! Oh goodness, one of these things. Otherwise, my thoughts on Wigfrid haven't really changed too much from my guide, other than she is actually one of the best characters in the game now, like completely unironically. Her spear makes it so you can just be unstoppable and just so so aggressive, and because you have such easy access to AoE damage. And there has been a few changes since this video was recorded, mostly being they changed the requirements to spawning Cecil Champion, which ultimately makes it a little faster to get the materials for Cecil Champion. A new medium level boss was added, and Wigfrid can use her battle cool caster while riding on a beefalo without dropping it. Uh, so before this change, 
range, you would always drop the canister when you used it, so hence I didn't use it in the run. What do you think of the new Wigfred, and which all boss speed run do you want to see next? Let me know in the comments. I did say I was going to do Willow's Guide next, but um, I got carried away with Wigfred speed run attempts. Also, in the new update that's in beta as of writing this, uh, Willow got a bunch of changes, so good thing I didn't make her guide yet. <laughs> also, Wormwood got some changes, and I will add that to the pinned uh, comment of his guide, yes, or its guide, yes, yes. No, wait, he does have balls. We, we confirmed that. He, Wormwood has balls. Confirmed. Thanks again to my professional backseat gamers on Twitch, and the biggest thanks again to Lord Lee, who was also running this route at the same time as me, like I said before. His YouTube is linked in the description. Anyway, thanks for watching. I sure do love sleeping. Make sure to buy all the sleep masks that meant to sleep, uh, so you too can also do the sleeping. Uh, I'm leaving now. Good night, because my voice is broken. Wow.